I freaking love being a Cajun. I absolutely love it. I absolutely love being here. My family loves being here. This is our home. Uh, I tell people all the time we didn't choose Lafayette or the Cajun culture. They chose us and adopted us. And Coach Robe adopted us and made us family and, and saved our lives and saved myself and saved my family. And we freaking love this place. You know, people ask me a lot, uh, well, how about the team? Tell me about the team you inherited. Uh, I tell them I didn't inherit nobody. Uh, this is our team. And I, I love these boys. I love them like they're my own. And uh, it's not a matter, get this question a lot, do you like your team? It's not a matter of liking anybody. I respect them. I respect the heck out of them. And that's hard to do with me. It's hard to get my respect on the baseball field. And I, res I respect the heck out of these kids. Uh, Coach Rowe, talk about this up front. Save me personally, save my family. Uh, was a mentor, a, a boss, and, and quickly a best friend. Uh, Caleb just touched on it. Do you want to win for Coach Robe? Dang right we want to win for Coach Robe. We ain't going to let Coach Robe down. Coach Robe built this. Coach Robe's the reason that this press conference looks like it's in Boston and not Lafayette, Louisiana. Coach Robe's responsible for creating something that has performed and played much larger than it is over the course of 25 years. And that's something not only are we going to uphold that, we're going to continue to push that further and further and further and further. And it's not a matter of expecting to win one game. We expect to win the whole thing. I will never in my life take part in anything unless I expect to win the entire thing. And I'm telling you right now, these boys love each other. They're very talented. They know how to play together. And they compete, and they compete nasty together. With that, I'll take some questions from you guys. So do you have any Coach Robe and I were opposites, and if you know Coach and you know myself, you'll, you'd know that. Uh, he, uh, he's a very patient, caring uh, man that had time for everybody. Uh, and I, I learned a lot of good traits from Coach in, the, in those respects. I'm, I'm kind of the opposite. Uh, I'm very intense. Uh, I want stuff to go down right now, and I expect – the absolute best out of everybody. And, you know, if you if you ask him for one, coaches say it all the time. If you got seventy percent in the take tank, I want a hundred percent of that seventy. And that's kind of who I am. I expect us to to play. I expect us to play through injury. I expect us to not only play through injury. I expect us to play for each other. Uh, and I expect us to play fast, hard, and loose. And Coach Robe and I came up came together at at it was ordained timing. And and I needed Coach, and he needed me. And, uh, you know, we, what we did was pretty special. I see a lot of the same things in the boys that uh, are now a part of my family and have welcomed me so graciously in, back into their family. And uh, we have a lot of fun, but we work extremely hard and uh, compete even harder than that. So, with, with what you just said about you expect things now, are you still at least a little surprised that it, it seems like everything, all the buy in is a that it happened with the players as quickly as it as it did. Yeah, Kev, the buy-in started in the fall of 2012. The buy-in was here when I got here. Uh, what we had done uh, happened for these young men at a very impressionable age. They were probably, uh, you know, 12 years old, 13 years old. That's a very, very impressionable age. They witnessed all this. Hayden just told me he was at some of those games. I know Brennan was. I don't know if Army drove down from North Louisiana, but uh, all the buy-in started in 2012, 13, and 14. Now, Coach paved an incredible culture before I ever got here. Our cultures are very, very similar, and uh, that, that made the transition really seamless. Uh, and not to mention we were banded together over, over tragedy, and that's a pretty tight bond. Our, our coaching staff's very well-rounded and balanced. Uh, you know, you, you look at a guy like BJ, who to me is kind of a voice of reason. He's a veteran guy uh, that's been to the highest levels, uh, played the game 
uh, at the highest level. He's been around the best players in the world. Uh, he's got 48 at bats versus Hall of Famers. You know, who has that? By the way, they got three hits combined in those 48 at bats. Uh, but he's a voice of reason. He's a guy you can lean on. He's a guy that, that's been there, done that. And the best part about Beach is he played here. And he's got the connection to Coach Rove. And then you look at Anthony Babineau, who Bab and I came up together as young pups in the coaching ranks. We've been together 25 years. And not only is he, does he coach, he's one of my, my closest friends. Uh, and then Jeremy Talbot, who's incredibly, incredibly smart. His baseball IQ and acumen is through the roof. Uh, Coach Talbot and I won championships together at Texas A&M. And then Jake Wells was here when I got here. And I, I, I wanted Jake because Coach Robe absolutely loved Jake. And it took me about a day and a half to figure out why he's, he's intense, brings a lot of energy. He's a foot soldier. If you tell him one thing and set it in motion, it's done and taken care of. You don't have to worry about it again. The staff comp complements each other very well. I'm a big believer in the, the tightness of the staff will always trickle down into the team. And I think our players sense that. Uh, and then Coach Domain, Chris Domain, the legend from Scott, Louisiana. Uh, you all know him. Holds together our academics and our camps and uh, does some bullpen coaching for us. And uh, just a man of the people. Coach, you mentioned uh, Jake Wells just a minute ago. How did, it, how did both of your philosophies offensively come together? I know uh, you, you didn't know him all that much when you got here. And I know you have your own tack mentality and you're, you're a big time offensive guy. But so is he. How did your two mentalities kind of mesh together? Jake's a learner and he's a guy that wants to grow. And uh, you know, he, he, he uh, is, is very humble. There's not a lot of ego with Jake. And, uh, you know, he wanted to learn the pack mentality and he wanted to be a part of that. And so he's been a, he's played a huge role inside of that. Uh, I look at it a little bit like this. You buy a Chick-fil-A franchise, you don't go make your own menu. Uh, you're going to own the franchise, but they're going to tell you what to serve. And so uh, he understands the parameters of our offense and learns a little bit more each day. He already knows the players. Him and Jeremy Talbot did an incredible job of recruiting this team. This team is SEC balanced uh, from the pitching to the defense, to our athleticism, uh, to our ability to swing the bat. They just did an incredible job. Uh, Jeremy worked relentlessly on the road. Jake complimented him very well. And uh, you know Jake did a tremendous job with the hitters a year ago. And I can I see him continuing in that mold. Uh, I will always set the tone of what I want, and those guys will, will see it through. What about your guys on offense? Really excites you. Super athletic. Uh, we compete. We compete with some violence and some bat speed. Uh, we have an understanding of an approach. If you have two things, if you have an unbelievable attitude and a great approach, you're going to hit. Uh, you can take swing and, and, and chunk it out the window. Uh, at the moment of truth, the swing, there's no instruction manual. Uh, the swing ain't going to matter. You got what you got on that given day, all right? But you do have, uh, you can have a great approach, an expectation to win, and you, or a, a, a great attitude and a, a great approach and understanding of who you are and what's expected of you inside of what we do. And if those two things, those two things, attitude, approach, are strong, and we, we have an understanding of uh, how to compete and uh, w what needs to go down, when and where, uh, when the rubber meets the road, we're going to be all right. Uh, very unique uh, set of personnel is not very comparable to many teams I've had in the past. Uh, when I start trying to comp guys to other guys, uh, you know, to start with Brennan in center field, and he's a guy that's calloused up a little bit. He's, he's, he's been to some very high highs, and he's been low. And uh, he's, he's clawed his way all the way back into an understanding of who he is as a player and who he is as a man, and he's primed for a great season. Uh, and just kind of going through the middle of the field, you look at Hayden, probably the smartest kid I've ever coached, uh, and I don't have a problem saying that. His baseball IQ and acumen is through the roof. Uh, and it has a, a very unique skill set where he's an elite runner with bat to ball skills. He can field it and he can throw it uh, and just has incredible natural instinct. Okay, he's a, he's a natural leader and does things uh, that, you, you know, I haven't seen since baby Trahan coaching baby here. Uh, Connor Dupuy, local kid out of Maurice, uh, uh, he's an elite defender, uh, still maturing at the plate. Uh, Johnny Wyndham uh, is a kid. Although at third base, he, he reminds me of somebody like a Brooks Robinson. I mean, it's, he makes play. He's electric on defense. 
which you don't always see. Uh, his defense is, is offense and the fact that he's going to save a lot of runs. Uh, and then Toro is back healthy. Sebastian uh, behind the plate. Julian Brock's a freshman that's going to be an incredibly high draft pick out of here one day. He's got the body and the arm and the size to do it. Uh, Toro has a pretty complete game behind the plate. Our catching situation is exciting. Uh, there's a third catcher behind them that'll that'll he's going to hit every day for us uh, in the four or five hole probably and uh, Nick Hagador and left-handed hitter that can really swing it. Uh, so we're we're steady up the middle of the field, but also bring a blend of athleticism. Uh, and so I would expect it to be exciting. I don't, I'm not a guy that gets lost on results offensively because it's an up and down battle, man. It's the guys that can grind for an entire season and then look at the body of work at the end. Uh, generally, those are the guys that get it done. We know uh, every position you have to compete, but where are the positions where there may be questions or where there may be um, the biggest point that you can take right now? All of them, but center field and shortstop. That's it's pretty simple. What's your outlook on the pitching staff? How you decided on the opening day starter? We've got three or four guys that I call. Uh, alpha dogs that, that could go out and set a great tone for us right now today. You look at Carter Robinson, pitcher of the year from Mesa Junior College out in Arizona, a uh, six foot eight, 230 pound kid that's got a four pitch mix any place, anywhere, anytime. Uh, and then Connor Angel, uh, six foot six kid, reminds me a lot of Alt Robichaux. Uh, a little, little heavier than Austin was, but still kind of thin. Uh, low three quarter delivery. Uh, he can sink it, he can slide it. Uh, he's athletic as well. Uh, he's a guy that's going to be a good draft pick as well. Uh, Jeff Wilson's another guy coming out of Grayson Junior College, 6'4", 2, 220, 225, with three pitches. He can sink it, he can slide it, he can pull it. Uh, Will Moriarty is a two-way guy for us, uh, six, six foot five. That's the thing about our, our staff and the job that, that Jeremy and Jake did is everyone looks the part. Uh, you know, we got a chance to score two or three runs just when we get off the bus, uh, just from from looking the part. Uh, Moriarty's a, a kid with a really good arsenal. He's going to be 88, 92. He can pound the zone uh, with a plus change up and a good breaking ball. That's that's four off the top, and we're not talking about Jack Burke, who hasn't quite made it back from injury, but should be available opening day. Uh, that gives us an option there. Austin Perrin is another kid that threw huge innings last year. Left-handed uh, pitcher for us out of the New Orleans area that was up to 91, 92 this fall. Uh, he's not quite back yet, but he will be. And we're deep in the middle and in the back. Uh, this is a luxury. You know, I was telling the boys the other day, if the 2014 team had two to three guys off of this staff, and you could almost close your eyes and just say, we'll take him, him, and him you might be talking about the greatest team of all time. I mean, it was 58 wins, add five to it. That's 63, nobody's done that. Uh, but that's how impressed I am with this team and this pitching staff and the way it was put together. Now, everything we're talking about today is worth the piece of paper you guys are writing on. We're gonna have to go out and prove it, and prove it every night, and that's my biggest thing, is I'm not a big win-loss guy, right? Uh, what I, what I worry about is the product that we're putting on the field. Do the fans get their money's worth? Are we exciting? People going to pay to watch us fight, right? And uh, this is a team that I'm really excited about in those ways. So you, you pay 20 to get in, we're going to get you 25 worth in your experience, and you're going to see a bunch of guys fly around and have fun and compete. What role does options and all the options you have at first and second play into the pack mentality? Options, not as much, Kev, as much as interchangeable parts. I think about a guy like Brennan, and you, you take Connor Cook, who's made a huge jump. He's up to 95, 96 in the fall, lowered his hand just a touch. He's getting a little, lot of life on the baseball now. He can spin it. Now he's got to change up. He's going to work at the back of games, but he's also, he might be the best athlete at this university uh, in anything. Uh, if I, I think interchangeable is, is bigger than just sheer options through numbers. Uh, you, you know, you want to match up late, you can run Cookie, who's on the mound already, out to center, run Brennan to the bump. We're going to lose our DH, big deal, okay? And then we can flip those guys back. You can do that one time. We've got a lot of those type interchangeable parts, uh, you know, where you could see uh, – 
Nick Hagedorn start off DH and we bring Tally off of first in the game or Frank or whoever it might be, Haggy goes into the game at first base. Uh, there's a lot of those type parts on this ball club and that, that's what I like. Uh, options is a double-edged sword uh, because you can, get, you can get down a deep, deep rabbit hole with that stuff. Uh, I don't want to do X, Y, and Z because the book says to do X, Y, and Z, and we've got all these options. I like to give guys a chance to work out of their jam sometime as well. And so what we do have is a very small unit. We've got 33 guys. One of them's going to red shirt, so we've got 32. And uh, everybody understands their job due to your function. Yeah, zero. I mean, I was dead and he saved me. Every day for the rest of my life's gravy. Um, you're looking at a guy that's unafraid to crash and burn at whatever he does. But just know this, Coach Rowe will get absolutely every ounce of what I got. You're, uh, I know you talk about a lot of options. Do you have a set time? Do you want to have a Friday night, Saturday night rotation by the time you reach conference? Or is that not something that concerns you about having a go-to Friday night guy? Or is it just ride the hot hand? No, I'd like to have that. That said, I think I think Sunday and Tuesday may be an option for us because, you know, the way I look at things is like this, and I was telling the guys this, is we're going to enter. I want to play 70 games this year. I don't want to sign up for 56. I want to sign up for 70. And it's, it's, it's a war, right? So it's a, it's, there's 70 battles inside that war. And to win that, to win that war, uh, you need to do absolutely whatever it takes to win every single battle. And so if I've got to empty a Sunday guy to win a Friday game, I'll do it. Uh, because we have a couple of guys behind him that I have no problem starting. And so uh, and I'm a firm believer that's how you win tournaments and regionals. Uh, is you do whatever it takes to win the first one. You can't sweep unless you win the first one. Uh, you get the first one, got a chance to win a series on Saturday. Get that one, you got a chance to sweep on Sunday. And so, yeah, I, I mean, you need to have that thunder up top. You need to have that guy that uh, I, I call him a stopper. They can stop whatever's going on, stop momentum. They can stop the other team's momentum. They can stop a losing streak. They can maintain a winning streak. You need to have him up front, and he's a guy that everybody rallies around. And I think we've got that. Coach, we heard Taylor earlier talk about maybe a divide between hitters and pitchers in the past. Was that something that you noticed when you got here at first, and how did you kind of coexist? I probably started that, actually, in 2012, the bad side of it. Uh, it, was, it would get pretty ugly. Uh, there was a lot of ugly confrontations in a, in a good way, if you will. And uh, I think you need that, but I think there also needs to be balance. I think uh, more than anything, what we've done is, is come together as a band of brothers over a central, central cause. Number one, we're Cajuns, uh, and we're representing an unbelievable community and university. And number two is uh, we're also representing a man that means so much to us individually, yet as a team. I love those kids. I, I love giving young guys a chance to coach because the same thing happened for me. It's a chance to open a door and let them finish a degree and at the same time see if this is something they want to pursue because if they do, it's dogged, man. It's, it's tough business. And, uh, you know, both of those guys and Adam Wise as well, uh, we have an incredible group of student assistants and managers, and they kind of make us go. Uh, you know, Coxie's one of our – He's one of our go-tos right now. He pitches to us a bunch in inner squads, and he still gets, still gets guys out. I mean, I wish we had him. Uh, and then Zach LaFleur, for those of you who don't know, he's got a broken jaw right now. Uh, broke it in two places the other day in, in early work. We've, I don't know if you guys have ever watched us early work. It looks like a pinball machine, and uh, we do everything on the field. Uh, this speaks to the character of, of Zach LaFleur and what he's made out of, what his family is, and and type of man they raise. And it speaks to the character of this community and kind of what it represents to me and his team is he got hit from me to that, that wall right there with a line drive uh, from one of our bigger kids. And uh, never saw it coming. Hit him right in the jaw. Didn't go down. Uh, grabbed his jaw. Started spitting blood. I get out to him, look at him. A lot of blood. Uh, he's got all his teeth intact. Walk over to the dugout. He rinses it out. He's still bleeding, and he says, I'm good to go, coach. 
and walked back out there and started feeding the machine. Uh, that's kind of what this place is to me. You had three guys come through and answer different questions the same way using different words about what this team is as a group, what this team means, about winning, winning for Rogue, winning for you. Has there been a lot of coach-driven conversation or has a lot of been player-driven leadership? Because their answers all seem in line, even though they're all different terms. We've got really good leadership. They get it. And, and that's, that's kind of who they are. It's kind of who they come from. Uh, and where they come from, and, and I'm a firm believer it's uh, we're seeing the benefits of the road that Coach Robe had paved early on with these young men. Uh, and, and in addition to that, uh, I think we all believe in each other and we all care about each other and we all love each other. And uh, that, lead, that doesn't come easy. I believe that's forged through adversity. It's not forged through kumbayas and us patting each other on the butt. Uh, it's, it's come, that, that comes from challenging each other, and, and it comes from a lot of confrontation and critiquing and, and being uncomfortable at times, but understanding the central vision and focus and what our mission is. Yeah, he is. Uh, I really like Bouge. Uh, he's, he's an older guy that, that understands the game. He's had a lot of big hits here. Uh, he can run a little bit. Uh, he can really defend. Uh, Alex Haney's another guy that can really defend at a, at a big league level. His bat's waiting to catch up, uh, but it's not because of a lack of work. It's just a, it's a maturity and a timing thing. You're going to see a lot of both of them. Uh, you know, Ben Fitzgerald's another kid in, in right field that uh, he's he's going to be a mainstay in our lineup. Just an explosive uh, blend of speed and strength. A uh, little bit like Seth Harrison. Uh, when, when you combine that speed and strength combo, except he's left-handed. Uh, you know, and, and there is some depth out there. Uh, and, and we certainly have some options. We have a freshman named Zeph Hoffpower. Uh, that, that is, he's going to be a kid that's going to hit for a lot of power one day. Hitting's tough, all right? And it takes time, and it takes getting calloused up a little bit. Uh, to really understand what you're trying to do up there. And so, yeah, we've got some options. Uh, Will Moriarty, who I mentioned on the bump, he can really hit as well. Uh, so, uh, you know, the outfield, I, I, I really like us positionally. I like us defensively. I think you're looking at something that we could play. We could play conditions, too. You want to play defense on a Friday, sacrifice a couple of at-bats, we could do that. You want to bang on a Saturday. Uh, or play the conditions with the wind blowing in or out. I'm a firm believer we could probably do that. We could match up right or left. Uh, we can run if we want to run. We can bang if we want to bang. Uh, and then we can play a, probably a stock lineup where there's a little bit of a lot of that. You brought up the health of two pitchers. Is there any other health issues going into the season? You've got some guys banged up a little bit, but nothing that's uh, you know going to keep guys out for an extended period. Both of them are very talented. Both of them are very hungry. Uh, there's some local flavor here. Uh, you know, both of them love to compete. Both of them play for each other. Uh, physically, they're a little, they're, they're different. Physically, there's, uh, it, it's a different ball club, but a lot of the same components are there. I think there's a lot of kids like that team in 14 that have a story, and that's their story to tell. But. Uh, come from different backgrounds and, and come from, from different things that may drive their hunger.